Hi, this is Frank. And this is Tim. And we just stepped into the Vectorverse. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> I am Vector, and this is the Vectorverse. I have two very special guests on the show today. A couple of guys, a couple of beers, and a whole lot of pop culture nostalgia. The host of my favorite geek podcast in the world, Two Geeks Who Geek Out Over a Couple of Ungeeky Beers, Tim and Frank from Beer with Geeks. Welcome to the Vectorverse, my friends. Thank you. Oh, thank you for having us. It's it, always an honor to be even close to the Vectorverse, never mind on the Vectorverse. It is, it is an honor and a privilege to be here. You guys, not only are you great friends, great fathers, great husbands, um, I'm not married to you, but I'm pretty sure you guys are great husbands. I I just cannot tell you guys how great you are in all aspects, but you guys are great podcasters and great comic book fans. So I'm very pleased to have you here in the Vectorverse. You've been a guest on my show before, back when it was comic book kaiju, but I said, I got to get these guys into the Vectorverse because I, you know, what's funny. Uh, so full disclosure, Frank has not seen across the Spider-Verse yet, but Tim has. So I used to say, I want your guys's comic book origin story. But from now on, from this day forward, I will be referring to them as canon events. And Frank, you'll see that in the Spider-Verse. But I wanted to get these two geeks on to get their canon event. What got them into comic books? And since I met Frank first, I'm going to ask Tim. Tim Gannon, uh -oh. what, was your, <laughs> what was your canon event? <laughs> um, my can well, you want what got me into comic books or like what got me into superheroes? Because uh, I think those are two different things. Mm, let's get both. I want to hear both because I've never asked you this. I've known you for 900 years and I've never asked you this question before. So I'm, I'm curious for both. A long time so, to dream Jedi 900 years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Go in chronological order. Which one came first, superheroes right. or comic books? So superheroes came first, I think, as it did for, for – um for our generation and, and you know like you're just kind of like whatever was shown to you first i feel like that's kind of your entry point and so m mine was um so just full disclosure my daughter is like 10 feet off camera so you might hear a one-year-old <laughs> at different points um currently she's saying zinny bed which is our dog's name and so she's tapping the the chair because she knows the dog likes the chair but anyway if, this is if not she my flies camera, by but... with her cape flowing in the wind i'm gonna go crazy it's yeah she, she might be she might be making an appearance on camera in about a second so which is okay you want to be on camera eloise eloise there she is oh. yay hey. this Hi. is training the next generation of geek yeah. right here eloise yeah. she was actually sitting in her chair reading a star wars book and a superman book and so like yes we are training the next generation <laughs> that is Love perfect it. Yeah. Tim has so, sent so many uh, videos of her. Yeah, she's she's good. She's good people, right? <laughs> but any, <laughs> that's your Uncle Frank right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear you because I have headphones on. So it means nothing. <laughs> um, but anyway, so I um my first thing that I absolutely definitely watched was the Adam West movie. Ooh, yeah. Um, and so that was, that was, I would argue the canon event was like, you know, the, mm. you know, being, you know, being put in front of the TV and say, you will like this. And I said, yes, I do. I do like this very much. Um, and then it was like, like the Adam West and Burt Ward animated show. Like we would Ooh, go to yes, yes. the VHS mm. of that. Um, and then we actually also got the Superman one at the same times. Cause I remember like, like liking the Brainiac episode of mm. the Superman one. And then, uh, but I also, but then I also really liked the um, like Penguin and Riddler and Joker and Catwoman of, ah, the, of the animated yeah. one. I actually have more vivid memories of watching that than of the Adam West live action movie. Um, and then, uh, 
I also want to say, and then the the Fleischer Superman cartoons, yes, which he had on mm. tape. I think it was like, I think it was like, it, like Frank kind of like knows when his came about. I know his story, but like, I'm pretty sure mine just materialized in the house one day. I have no idea. <laughs> <where> it, <came. laughs> it was Tim from the future, the reverse Ganon. Yeah, he came like placing it into the oh yeah, man that reverse Flash style, but not <laughs> evil, right? Yeah, he created so. himself. Yeah, so um, those are the things that got me in, and then and then like some other television shows, like you know Batman the Animated Series or X Men and Spider Man on Fox Kids. Those certainly went Superman the Animated Series. Those go a long way. Um, Fantastic Four, mm. um, uh, the Hulk, Incredible Hulk, Iron Man. I used to love all of that stuff, mm. and then so and then I was I'm old enough that I remember. I mean, you guys are the same age, but like when the grocery store used to sell comics ah um, yes and so yes. i remember being in line with my mom and with my and my brother and there was marvel reborn was like doing its thing oh wow and so i we like got a just got a couple of those but it was a fantastic four issue and it had black panther in it and super scroll and dr doom and the hulk and like all this stuff and it was jim lee art and like oh. I didn't know, like, but I knew these characters because of those cartoons. Mm -hmm. And then I um so I was just like totally in Yes, that's a picture of mommy, very good. <laughs> <laughs> um and so no, save for the save for the microphone. <laughs> now she won't say it. <laughs> I apologize that the Vactorverse has been a uh <laughs> been uh um bombarded it's been ganonized <laughs> yeah <laughs> um and so uh yes ma'am there is a picture of mommy <laughs> go, go, get, go get your superman book go get your superman book for me and she's off um incidentally superman of smallville uh is an excellent kids graphic novel Ooh. just so everyone is aware it's can confirm it nice. is age appropriate for every. There's like nothing, like nothing bad in it at all. It's so good, um, and so, um, uh, so anyway, so those were like the comic events, and I remember getting like comics for my birthday one year, and this was like, um, uh, Clone Saga Spider Man. Ooh. So it was like Ben Riley fighting mm, Mysterio yes, yes. and a couple of Batman the Animated Series comics, and I. Like, but none of those, like, it never made me, like, I need to get the next one. I need to get mm. the next one. I need to get the next right. one. That never really happened for me. Um, even I do have, going back to, like, the grocery store, I remember getting Peter Parker, Spider-Man, Peter Parker, Spider-Man number 50, the return of the Green Goblin and the death of Ben Riley, like, easily Ooh. my most treasured comic book ever. And John Romita Jr. art, it was just, Ooh. like, explosive, kind of changed my, like, like how much i love the thing you know like that's kind of you know how, you, you know how like you have that thing like i like liked star wars and then the phantom menace came out and then i loved star wars <sighs> oh, you know man. like so you the, the, that turn event was definitely peter parker spider-man number 50 um and then i was in high school i was working at blockbuster and a friend of mine who i palmer who i do academy rewind with on top of audio network he came in to the store and he was like Wonder Woman killed Max Lord. And I was like, that means nothing to me, but tell me more. <laughs> um, and, and so he started bringing me the books that he was reading. Like, and that was about the, like, was that was the same time as the return of Jason Todd. Oh, uh, and just like kind of getting into time. infinite crisis. And that's where I started to go to the store and pick up books on a weekly basis. Um, and that just has continued forward to this day. Um, so I was, 16 17 so you're talking tw like almost 20 straight years of reading comics man i love hearing that and i also love the kind of whenever i have a guest on and, and i get their their canon event i love hearing the time frame and the environment that they grew up in because everyone is shaped by all these you know external forces and everything comes together to create this comic book fan. So when I, when I think about Tim Gann and now I will have all of these memories of how he was formed. Um, so this is fantastic. Now let's get to the man with the plan, the most rambling man on the internet, 
Frank Ramblings, what is your canon event? My canon event uh, happens to to coincide with my first memory oh. period. Oh, wow. Um, I remember, and I may have been exposed before this, but this is the first I remember. I remember being exposed to Superman the day my my younger sister was born. She's three. I was three years old. <laughs> Oh, and wow. it's my first memory because I got a sister. Uh, but I remember that the day she was born, my parents gave me, you know, a couple of a couple of presents because I wasn't the only child anymore. And one of those presents was a VHS of the Superman Fleischer cartoons. Yeah, that I wore. I played that tape to death, uh, destroyed it, uh, have since owned other copies. But I absolutely fell in love with Superman in particular and superheroes in general that day uh over 30 years ago and I I you know then I uh, remember watching a lot of the George Reeves series I had a, a tape with uh my dad had taped a marathon uh, of, mm. of that show off of TV so I had a bunch of those episodes that I watched a lot as a kid and then the Superman the Animated Series came out. I remember the night that premiered, the the uh, uh, the the three part you know movie length event, uh, and watched that show for its whole run. And uh, he died in the wool, huge Superman fan, you know, from age three, um, and and remains so ever, ever since. Um, so that was how I got into superheroes and Superman in particular. Um, I, I really got to like Spider-Man a lot, you know, growing up in the, the nineties, you had a lot of Spider-Man content on TV and in, uh, you know, a lot, of, I, I owned a lot of action figures of Superman and Spider-Man and some Batman. And, you know, I had the, the Batman forever, Batman, Batmobile. Uh, I remember when that movie came out and it was, a I was probably like first or second grade or something, or maybe third grade when that movie came out and it was a big, um, big, exciting summer. And then, uh, I remember fast forward, you know, I'm a huge Superman fan for years, fast forward a few years to when I'm right around the time I'm starting high school, somewhere around that. And I started visiting my local comic shop with some friends. They were, they were into manga and I was sort of tagging along. I wasn't really a mm. comics reader yet, but they were there for, for manga. And I was looking around and I spotted Superman Red Sun. Ooh. And uh and it was like at the checkout counter. Like it was on the way out and I I asked the the owner like what what is this? And he was like, "Oh man, you got to read this. Like this is so good. It's like what what happened if Superman landed, you know, 12 hours later and landed in in uh the USSR instead of the USA." Uh and I was just uh, that the, just the concept of it like was so interesting to me that it just mm. it, it pulled me in and, and that's the first comic i really remember reading for real i'm sure i browsed others before that um i probably browsed some superman uh like newspaper comic strips from back in the day and that kind of thing but that's the first one that i remember really like being like okay i'm gonna read a comic for real um and that was probably when i realized that comics were were more than just uh comic strips you know that they were that there was more substance to them or could be more substance to them uh mm -hmm. than the comics that i sort of stereotypical than, than like golden or silver age comics let's say right uh, which was right. sort of my stereotypical idea of what, what comics were um realized i was wrong about that and and so <laughs> i i i that was my gateway and from there i started reading a, a, around the era that, that tim's talking about we're only a couple of years uh, apart in age but the uh the infinite crisis era mm -hmm. um i i around that same time i started getting into smallville and from there, I was following a lot more um, internet communities, Superman-based internet communities. And uh, I remember people talking about things like uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths and Infinite Crisis and Identity Crisis and all these other events that happened in between. Um, and I was like, I, I, I want to I wanna know more about this. What's 52? What's mm. what's final crisis? What's all this stuff? Um, so I, I, you know, really went back and caught up on years of events and and DC canon, uh, and and really that's when I I 
really became like a DC fan more broadly mm-hmm. and really fell in love with the the universe, the characters. I became a big Hal, a big Hal Jordan guy around that time. Um, uh, I was already a big John Stewart guy from from the Justice League series. Um, and, but but Hal, I was like, oh, okay, this is like this was like the one of the well not the first i guess but you know the one of the the longest running cool like i was learning a lot about about all that stuff the the uh uh jeff john's superman uh, uh action comics run was happening around that time and i was just ah. absolutely in love with that run um uh actually it was around that time factor that you and i met and i started doing superman uh bits for for your podcast at the time I was, we were doing like monthly like here's what happened in superman oh, this month man i forgot about that yeah that was oh yeah, man that was a years great ago. time yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah so that was a great time in, in superman comics mm. great time in you know smallville was Dang. on and all, all these it was a great time to be a fan uh for me and i've i've i haven't been i haven't been a monthly reader uh consistently ever since i i've fallen off the wagon a few times and, and gotten back on but um I I have been a huge DC fan ever since and and you know obviously goes without saying that like the Marvel movies the last few years have been have been huge and I've I've absolutely loved those but like my my first love was was Superman and, and was the and the DC uh characters um and, and I just yeah I absolutely have been mm. have have been a huge fan ever since but that's how it all started. Oh man, that is fantastic and I love like I said hearing the time period of when you got into it and then hearing you name those stories, I I can picture exactly what, you know, where I was and then what was going on in comics at that time. So, and we also have kind of a similar um, journey, I think, because Superman was the first superhero that my dad, I think placed in front of me because I don't have a specific memory. I just remember him always being, Oh, it's Superman. He's always there. Batman, Superman, um, Spider-Man. They're just always, they've always been in my life. And then um, the Superman Red Sun experience that you had, I had kind of a similar experience with Speeding Bullets, which was a Superman as Batman or what if Batman was Superman or, and I saw that where where he's like, he's got a full face covering and he's in a Batman costume, but the the bat crest is in the shape of the the Superman crest. Yes. Yes. And And it's that, one of those iconic Superman poses, one of those iconic covers. And when I saw it, I was like, what is this? My mind was blown. Kind of like Frank with the red sun. Um, I said, I have to read this. And then that was kind of the period of when graphic novels and trade paperbacks were first kind of coming in. And yeah. before that, it was like, oh, if you missed it, you missed it. It was kind of like reruns on TV. You know, like um, if you missed the episode, you, you had you. There was no internet. There was no on-demand stuff. So the trade paperbacks were huge for me because I was able to catch up on like the Venom arc and Spider-Man and all these different things on Superman and, and things that I was not reading at the time. And I did like Frank. I did kind of like a, a deep dive on a lot of the characters. And especially when I got into podcasting and I got into talking about comics on a regular basis. And then when I discovered that you could get comics for free from your local library, that was another huge moment for me, as well as uh, when I discovered, oh, there's other people talking about comic books on podcasts. So all of those things kind of shaped me. So it's it's cool to hear these stories because, like I said, I've, I'd never asked you guys. I've known you guys for de- for decades, and I still just did not know a lot of your origin stories. And we've both both of you two have hosted separate podcasts with me before. Um, so we have like a huge connected web of mm-hmm. podcasting and comic books. Um, and I think we all love Marvel, but we have a DC connection as um, a core element to us. I think Superman and Batman, those are the the two things that we uh, have have kind of locked in on it and come together on. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's it's always great just to hear how you guys got into it and, and uh, also to see, because you guys are one of the, the two people that I talk to the most about superheroes and comic book properties, whether it's a movie or television show. Um, so I always have a good time when I'm talking to you guys and, and uh, I, I love uh, picking your brains and, and just getting your your take on something or your knowledge about something. So thank you very much for just being you, both of you two, 
And uh, I, I, I want to also get your Beer with Geeks canon event because, like I said, this is my favorite geek podcast on the internet where uh, Frank and Tim, they just talk about whatever is going on in pop culture or whatever they've been enjoying that week. Um, so I'm very curious because I think, I, I don't know if I was, or what I was doing when, when Beer with Geeks started. So I want to hear how it got it uh, came about i can i can start and then tim i, I can hand it over to you because because I, I what i remember is i i moved uh from from new york where i'd been living my whole life and where i grew up i moved up to to boston when i i met you know the woman who would eventually become my wife and i got a new job and moved my life up up to boston and Tim lived near Boston and Tim was my only friend uh, already in Massachusetts. And so I was excited, like, Hey, we'll get to hang out more. And, mm -hmm. and we, we maybe for a year or so, we, you know, saw each other every few weeks, sort of found a, a reason to, to see each other uh, uh, as much as we could. And then Tim, you were going off on, on a trip. Yeah. So I was going to China for work um, for two weeks. And I said to Frank, before I left, I said, we should do a podcast together. Um, I'm going to China for two weeks. So let's like, you know, here's like the seed of the idea. And let's let's talk when I get back. And Frank said, all right, so let's each come up with 50 topic ideas on our own in two weeks. Because we the assumption is that if you could come up with 50 topics, 50 episodes, even if they overlapped a little bit, you know, like obviously we'd end up talking about some of the same things. But if we had 50 ideas then we could get roughly 50 episodes out of the podcast and therefore we could probably get 50 more and 50 more and 50 more and now we're over 450 episodes um so like clearly it worked like <laughs> oh that was a great idea um and so i actually don't really remember the inception of why beer with geeks especially like yeah I don't because we were going over each other's houses and we would basically like we would basically like cook dinner for one another and just hang out and talk about stuff that we were interested in. So we just took that core concept and turned it into a show. I think that's really where it came from. Yeah. Um, without the dinner part, we would just eat dinner first. And <laughs> that, you know, because at the time we were both single, we, you know, we weren't married. We were living on our own. So we hmm. had time. And so dinner we with would geeks. Yeah, basically. Yeah. We thought that was, <laughs> this was the days before ASMR. So uh, this was back in the days of the USSR. So um, <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> so, um, um, uh, so like we didn't think about like, oh, people would love to hear us eating close to the microphone. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, that did not. That did not dawn on us at the time. No back in 2014 uh, or what yeah so we were doing yeah. it before like when podcasts were like still kind of fringy they were still, like yeah it was before, still a, like they became like commercialized really mm. yeah it was still a pretty very much a hobbyist thing you know and we had all i mean we'd all been doing podcasts for for years before that even um i i had i had st we, i guess we, tim and i had both stopped for for a few years um for various reasons but and i was i was i remember looking for uh, and i think i'd mentioned this to him i was looking for like the right show concept like to mm. sort of be able to get back mm. into it as a hobby now that i had time for it again and and i i think that that stuck somewhere in the back of, that, that, that i planted the seed somewhere in the back of your head and then you were like all right i'll do a podcast with you here's what we're gonna do like, <laughs> i'm going for two weeks and when i get back we're doing a podcast we're doing it. <laughs> well because like, the both of us had podcasts separately like frank had a few he did one with you i did one with you and hunter hunter camp so like we were a uh, frank knew more but like at least like we were comfortable <laughs> with the median uh the medium ahead of time um and so uh it was the hardest part i think like if you go back to those very first episodes we were like low balling like here here we are in my kitchen with a <laughs> uh, one yeti mic in the middle yeah of us. and like two or three episodes in we were like this is no good we can't <laughs> do it this way um and so we pretty much just stepped up our game from there and it was truthfully it was covid that allowed us to kind of keep going because as Frank like slowly moved from New York all the way up to 
uh, New Hampshire. Like you just kind of kept going up the up <laughs> New England up to like the edge of the United States. Yeah, I, I guess um, coming, I, I got close to Tim, and then I started getting further and further away from Tim, and it was getting hard for us to meet up. <laughs> but because of like because all of a sudden like video recording became um, not just available but easy uh to to record on all ends we've been able to keep going even though we don't live in the same state you know just much easier than we used to have to do it because i mean you remember we would all be on like skype or something like that and you'd have to like be sending people like audio files and different yeah like different different things and it was such a pain uh but you know now it's it's much easier and so and truthfully we like this is not so much the origin story of the canon event but like we keep going just because we can you know mm-hmm. like you know like we we don't really care at this point we don't care about you know numbers or accolades or even if anybody really cares about the topic anymore we, we were doing <laughs> it so long that like because we've had other shows right we've like you know we've like talked to like directors and cast members of supergirl and like you know and you know which was fun like multiple multiple actors and directors and writers and all this stuff and like that was almost i felt like that was kind of the heyday you know we did it we put our we 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 did our time and now we're we're coasting yeah i mean now we've you know we both were we've since gotten married and then we have kids and, you know, separately, we're not married to each other, but, <laughs> um, but you know, like uh, life changes, takes to different places. And, but, but beer with geeks has been a constant in that time. And, and, you know, from when we were both unmarried to now we're both married and each have a kid and, and, uh, and live in different state. Each of us lives in a different state than when the show started. And, um, Oh yeah. But, I moved too. Right. Yeah. 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 So like we, it's, uh, but it's cool. It's it's our weekly appointment to hang out. It is it is two friends, and it it is our weekly sort of excuse to to hang out. And hmm. and even at the beginning, that's kind of what it was. Was here is a structured reason for us to get together. At the time, it was in person. Now it's over Zoom. But like, it was a structured like like excuse to be like, all right, we're gonna get together every week to do this, and we'll hang out around it. But like, here's our excuse to make time on the calendar, and we still do it. Yeah, yeah, that's and, yeah, that's that's great. That's great. Yeah, that's very interesting because I have something similar. Um, a lot of times it's video games where okay, let's get together, play this game on yes. this night, and it's we can talk while we're playing, and it's just kind of a hangout and a meetup. And I don't go to bars and and uh, cl- nightclubs. I play video games and I podcast. Those are my yep. my vices. So um, yeah, I, I I can definitely relate to that and having a structured hangout is so important because there's been people that, you know, have kind of fallen off. I I don't talk to them as much just because we didn't have a structured, this is Mm -hmm. the time we're going to talk each week. This is the time we're going to meet up. So I can relate to that a hundred percent. And I'm, I'm glad that beer with geeks is still going. Um, I think out of all the friends I've had and all the podcasters I've known, you guys have the longest running podcast, the most consistent one. So uh, kudos to you. And I, I will always have a spot for you guys, no matter what podcast I'm doing, but um, my current venture, the Vactiverse, anytime um, you guys, I, I really want to get uh, a DC animated round table going where we can, every time there's a DC animated movie, um, our schedules haven't aligned a hundred percent. Um, yeah, you know, pit. I'm, you know, I'm there for that. I watch every single one. So except for the uh, R W that one had, that I was, was the, just about to truly, say the most recent one. So that's true. Like out of <laughs> almost 40 movies, it's like the only one that I was like, no, no, <laughs> not, not, clearly not even like, it's not meant for me. Like I'm not familiar with the with the other side. It's not a, a subgenre that I care about, and um, and I'm t- I'm still watching Next Generation. I have not watched anything Ooh. unless it's with my wife. I have not watched anything else but the Next Generation, and Man. so I'm already I'm se- season three. Like I'm <sighs> like I'm nice. final through because I want to get to season six. And Man. then do and then do chronological DS nine oh, with next dang. gen to then get into void so start switching it all up so I'm like plowing through as much as you, I can. 
you have got me chomping at the bit to talk about Star Wars and Star Trek with both of you. So we also have to find time to have uh, that discussion in the future. Frank, are you interested at all in that? It's DC RWBY. Are you interested in that at all? Do you have any interest? Ah. <laughs> I can be convinced. That's the thing. I, as, I, as a structured I, excuse to hang out with my friends, I'll watch anything. That's a good point. Yeah, I would do that. I, I mean, they're also like 75 minutes. So like the commitment right. of watching one is really small. Right. Yeah. yeah. I still have actually haven't watched it yet. I bought it, but I haven't watched that. And then I always love watching the special features on mm. every single one. And I still mm. haven't watched the Batman. Uh, what is it? Gotham? Doom, the, the Doom, Doom that came to Gotham. Yeah, I still haven't yeah. watched the special features on that one yet. Me uh, either. But, actually, normally I like I have like a system. I'll I'll watch the what's coming next mm, like yes, yes, thing yes. first. Then I'll watch the movie. Then I'll watch the behind the scenes. Yes. But Doom that came to Gotham didn't have what was coming next, and it just threw me oh. for a loop. Um, I don't even know if I actually finished Doom that came to Gotham. Now that I think about it, that is okay. not. You sound that's like a bunch of guys who have kids. <laughs> we got we have to get together and talk some more dc animated in the future but tim and frank i cannot thank you enough for joining me here in the vactiverse today um, i'm gonna have the link to beer with geeks everyone check them out um, check out all the things that they're doing on thought bubble audio and everything that tim and frank are creating in the world and putting out into the, into uh into the internet i want you all to check them out because these guys are like I said, not only are they great uh fathers, husbands, people, men, podcasters, they're just great guys in general. So I love everything that uh is Tim and Frank. So you guys should check them out and be on the lookout in the future for more appearances from the Beer with Geeks because we got to talk some more Star Wars, Star Trek, DC, Marvel. Everything is gonna be coming up. Beer with Geeks, and I'll have a root beer on our next uh, episode. So thank you very much for joining me, my friends. I want to let everybody know that Tim loves comics, Frank loves comics, and you should too. <laughs>